Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown-ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. Thank you so much, and happy Wednesday to everybody. It's good to have John back here. John yeah. has been on a quick little sabbatical. Uh, but he's uh, I wouldn't to- call it a sabbatical, man. It's called uh, work and systems merging and cutover dates and... All you types like, of fun stuff in the IT world. So you look like you started at Cabin Boy, but now you're at Captain of the Ship right now. Like it looks like I'm you're the on the seven seas. Every captain. time. Okay. But yeah, but uh thank you guys so much for joining us today. We have an amazing show uh for you. We're gonna be talking about Top Gun Maverick. And just so you know, spoiler alert, guys. We are gonna be talking about the plot. The characters, uh, some many great action sequences, uh, as well as the legacy of the film itself, how it honors the first movie. Absolutely. Uh, before go, hey, before before we go any further, want well, to make sure you all know to like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, like and share it right now. Share the joy. I mean, this is what we do the show for. And if you're watching live, make sure you do some comments. We want to hear from you and your thoughts because we have a lot of great topics with a lot of great uh, guests on today. So so make sure, listen, comment, and tune in because you are at the grown-ups table. And without further ado... Let me invite a few uh, great friends uh, of the show. Please give it up for our good friends, Charles and Big Al, everybody. Give it up for them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, welcome, it is, welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome. It is great to have you guys here. Uh, first off, uh, Charles, it's been a while since we had you on, man. It's been a while, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's his opening reply. Been a while, bro. <laughs> like so <laughs> even tempered. Like <laughs> actually, he fell through a wormhole. It was just five minutes ago for him. He yeah. Was, <laughs> he's trying to. He's like he, he's like Marty McFly when he gets back at the end of Back to the Future Part One when he sees Doc. It's like no, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, and Big Al, man, good to have you down here with us. Great to be back, man. Um. Yeah, I, lo- I love being on the show, man, and I needed to cut loose and have some you know, blow off some steam. So, thank you for having me. No problem at all. No Thanks problem for at all. Being. So, before we start, guys, I think we need before we get into Top Gun, man, we got to get our mindset into Top Gun. All right, oh. what I'm saying we need right now is we need call signs. We need pilot names. Now, I've oh. already picked mine. Mine is Chainsaw because I look like the one kid <laughs> from uh, summer school. Who is obsessed with Texas Chainsaw? Someone told me I look like that, and I'm like, good enough for me. Good enough for me. Big Al, do you do you have yourself a call sign? Anything that is reflective of who you are? Man, um, you posed this question earlier, and I've been thinking about it all day, and I got nothing. So I'm just gonna default to Skeletor. <laughs> you know what? Nice. I like it. That's good enough for me. All right, Charles, my man, what where, where, where are you at? Oh, uh, it's got to be Gator, right? There Gator, oh, dude, that's Gator's got his gap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Gator don't play no Gator shit. Don't play no- <laughs> all right, John, John, I gave you one earlier, but I want to see what you got. Oh, wow. dude, Commander, all the way. Commander, oh, okay, that's good. I like that. That does that fits who you are. All right, all right, all right. So, Skeletor, Gator, <laughs> Commander, and Chainsaw. Excellent. And if you guys have your own Top Gun call signal please make sure you comment it we'd like to share it we want to share that so let's anyone get like... who puts their call sign we'll show it on the show put it in there it'll be on the show yes yes we will all right so let's get talking about it man uh this movie i mean I, this question also goes to people watching so comment your answers but as a group right now guys why what gravitates us to watch this movie you know what made us want to see a sequel almost 30 years later what elements do you think made this movie in the first place Top Gun a beloved film? Well, for me, no one's gonna start. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll just say for me, it was one of those films where it was a fun film, you know. Like a lot of films of the 80s, the one thing I loved about them is that they they were a good time to watch, you know. Yeah. Like and, and, I, and I, the best example is when we were coming out of the movie Maverick, man. Everybody was high five in each yeah, other. Yeah, man, it was crazy. 
We felt like we were at the volleyball game. We felt yeah. like we were at the yeah. football team. We, yeah, we were like, yeah! We were like, Maverick's doing something. I actually held hands with the guy next to me at one point, I think. Because we were fucking spazzing. We're like, is Maverick going to do it? Is Maverick going to do it? And he does it. And we were we looked like that, that scene in every space movie where they tell NASA we landed. And they're like, yeah! Didn't like, you guys we, hug at the end of the movie? Like, did. I think we, you stood up and hugged. He did. Dude, it, was an <laughs> emo- Dude, it was an emotional movie. It was an emo- <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, and I said this, I'll say this on air, and I said this to John. While I'm a hardcore diehard Batman fan, you know me, I'll always argue for Batman. I'm a I'm a very biased argue of Batman movies. I'm gonna say this was the best film of the year. Because while I loved the Batman movie, I enjoyed it. It was a fun okay. movie. I love everything about it. It's perfect in my eyes. This movie, I had fun. I had fun yes. watching it. I yeah, was I so jacked up. After <laughs> <laughs> I was about. To, we went to. Dude, the I bar. almost enlisted. I think I almost we, enlisted. <laughs> no, we we went to the bar, and Jesse was so excited. He's like, "Do you guys have a specific Top Gun beverage?" And the woman was like, "No, we don't." <laughs> He's like, oh, what the hell? He's like, "Every other movie gets a beverage. You got a Dumbledore beverage, but you don't have a Maverick beverage." Downtown, like, oh. Downton Abbey had a beverage. Downton Abbey <laughs> had a beverage, right? They did, but the no hell? Top Gun beverage. None. Nope. AMC dropped the ball on that one. Missed opportunity. This tastes like honoring the Queen. Like, <laughs> like I want, it, I want a Maverick. You it know, tastes like, so elegant and royal. Yeah. But that, that was my take on why this movie worked and why Top Gun is such a beloved film of the 80s. But what was your guys' experience? I know, John, you told me about seeing this movie. Well, I mean, you know, I was born in 81. So, like, I saw this movie roughly after it came out. You know, I mean, obviously, I was a little too young to go to the theater to watch Top Gun thing. because I was, like, <laughs> you know, five. But, uh, um, you oh, know, tight. watched it shortly after it released on video. I remember watching it as a family. And I've just loved the movie ever since I was a kid. And I think there's a couple of things to this. Number one, Tom Cruise was, like, that was the huge. Like, at that point, he was really breaking out. So, like, everything was Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. Everybody Everybody loved the guy. I love Jets. I still love Jets oh, to this yeah. day. Uh, I When I uh, was trying to uh, determine if I could fly them in the military, I was told no because oh, of my I eyesight. So, yeah, I mean, I, I tried. I was like helicopter pilot, like regular plane pilot, cargo pilot. Fly. They're like, no, stop asking. So I'm like, okay. Um, but I just, I've always loved Jets because I love flying. That's why I like Superman. That's why Peter Pan is my favorite Disney movie. And I love Top Gun because it's about Jets and flying. But to me, it was also about – the soundtrack because i fucking love danger zone ever since i was a little kid (laughs) i still am i still do and i love the re-recording that they did for the film because they just simply re-recorded it they didn't change a thing they just re-recorded it and it damn near sounded perfect so that's a big part of it too is just that music and the journey that it takes you on and then lastly just the story, the camaraderie on how these two rival pilots end up bearing the hatchet at the end because they save each other's ass and they become friends. And to me, it was just like kind of total package in terms of storytelling. Even as a little kid, I understood it. So, um, yeah, I just I've just I've always loved this movie. I've owned it on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K and 3D. So anytime a new format comes out, Top Gun's always one of the first movies I get on the new format. So, I mean, it's will be in the nursing home it. watching 10K one day. <laughs> and i'm pretty well, sure i bought it on a streaming service too i'm pretty sure i have it on amazon even though i have all of them sitting over here just so that if i want to watch it i'm too lazy done like i mean it's just you know there's just a few movies that i'm like that with and top gun is absolutely one of those yeah no i it, it's a top to bomb it's a really good film but what are your guys' thoughts on the film on the new the new film no the new top, top gun the original yeah i 100 100- I 100% agree with John. Um, I was right there with you, 1981, mm-hmm. child, uh, product of the Reagan administration, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, that, that's that's everything was pumped in our heads, which is testosterone and macho. We had G.I. Yep. Joe. We had Transformers. We had He-Man, yep. Skeletor, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember being on the playground uh, in elementary school, and when you got on the swings, those weren't swings. That was your yeah. F-14. Oh, yeah. And you're all your buddies. You're fighting with your buddies. Who gets to be Maverick? Who gets to be Iceman? 
um, you know, and you were like swinging and you would start twisting your swing. That means you got hit and you got to bail out and then jump out of your swing and break your leg. And that's what we did, man. That's that, that was life when we were kids on the playground. Totally agree. So the one who ever, so whoever hit the above bar was goose. <laughs> That just happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we don't, we, no, no, no. We don't. We don't make jokes about goose like that. Man. He jumped he off. No he had no control he over just his did. You can't take it back. It's it's, recorded. it's there, John. Yeah, it's I mean, forever, forever. for all time. Yeah, I, just, I need to check you. No more. No more. No more. Okay. No more goose jokes. <laughs> No more goose jokes, but man, that is a hard scene, dude. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah man, that's like for us, for us being kids. That that's a scene like that's one of those things that taught us about death. Like, yeah, oh, he's gone, but he was the fun one. Yeah, and the fact that like when like Mavericks just laying there floating with him, and when the uh, divers jump in to bring yeah. him out of the water, they have to tell Maverick several times to let go of him. He's dead. We need to pull him up, and we need to save you. And he still doesn't want to let. I mean, that's his fucking brother, man. And that's like, oh man, that that hits in the feels every time. Every time, doesn't matter how many times I've seen the movie. And what's so good about that scene, though, is it's echoed so heavily in this new movie. Because yeah. granted, does he fly with anybody? The only time he ever flew with anybody, and I think that's what made the ending of the movie so impactful was the fact he flew with uh, Ro uh, Rooster. And I think that Rooster, just man. blew everybody's... I think I knew they were setting that up somehow. I well, just didn't know how we were... I didn't know how we were going to get there. Yeah. But when Rooster jumps into that seat... And and what was so good about that... And, and I, you know what? I will save... I won't go too much yeah, into this. Yeah, save this for when we get to that. Yes, time. yes. But let's get right into... Hold on. We got to hear from Charles. We got to hear oh, from Charles. Oh, sorry, Charles. My bad, Charles. Oh, it's it's just a iconic movie. The soundtrack, everything about that movie. You got the planes, you got the the music, you got yeah. the adrenaline, you got yeah. the little that cocky pilots. You got, I mean, what what's not to like about that movie? Oh, let's don't forget the uh, non nudity sex scene with Berlin playing in the background. <laughs> Dude, when you're like five years old though, and you watch that, it's like you're like, it's that. Is that close. what you were paying? <laughs> So you're just like, okay, I'm that close already. Like, maybe next time I'll see some nip or something. You know, you're. you're <laughs> no, hold, hold on one second. While we're on the topic of the soundtrack, I have you to throw some shade real quick. Um, just, just real quick, I got to throw a little bit of shade here. Uh, shade. If I have, if I have one critique of Maverick, because I mean that that movie is about as close to a perfect film as you can get, in my opinion. I don't disagree. Um. My one gripe is that they that they had a lot of they had a lot of uh, callbacks to the original soundtrack. Mm -hmm. They did not include um, "Mighty Wings" by Cheap Trick, and I, I love that fucking song. Uh, yeah. um, I know. I my know. first I rock concert that. ever was Cheap Trick with Motley Crue. Oh, and dude, I'm so jealous. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. That was a badass concert. And, I bet uh, it was. But yeah, man, that, that that's my favorite song from the first movie, and yeah. I, I was like got to be in here somewhere and it yeah. wasn't and i was pissed i did notice that we'll talk about that when we get back into maverick more specifically because there's a whole thing about the soundtrack which just like set maverick off oh yeah parts. so let's let's dig into that more because i agree with you i don't want to talk about that a little bit more so uh jesse what's kind of our next lead-in topic for this here well, right now we're gonna we're gonna talk about the build up to Maverick. The yeah. uh, and so the pandemic set this back. This movie was supposed oh, to man. be released last summer, man. And uh, I think it was before that. Oh, no, it, it was like it, three, was it like three years ago or yeah, something? It, it oh, got yeah, it got like movie multiple ever. years. And but I, you, can, I, but look, you can see why. You can see well, look how look how well this film is doing, and it's still making money. So think about it. If they released this in 2020, it would have been a disaster. It would, it would have been a disaster. It would have been it would have been a bomb. I mean, it wouldn't have been yeah. a bomb. It still been a great movie. Right. But it would have been like it wouldn't have been a box office hit like this. I mean, right. no way. Right. And, Absolutely. Uh, I, I it think was the right call. I think you know what it is. We, we're, we're, I think we are more yearning for good old times since COVID le went yeah. away. And yeah. I think that's what is making people flock to this movie. Yeah. Because, yeah, there is this movie has a lot of great nostalgia factor to it, but in, yeah. in a great way, not in a lazy way. Because the movie mm -hmm. has substance over nostalgia. You know, it's not just a, a cash train of 
we're going to get to fly with Maverick one more time. No, we get to be in Maverick's head. Uh, you know, we got to learn about him, see how he's been for the last year, all these years. And, and that's what I think made this movie so good. So the yeah. buildup, I think, was great. I think the pandemic, in a weird way, was a great disguise. I don't think it would have box office bombed, but I don't think it would have. I think it would have maybe broke even at the worst case scenario. Maybe, maybe. I guess yeah. here's yeah. the thing. Tom Cruise has a lot of clout. He does. I he mean, does. He does. I think. I think they would have made. I don't think it, they would have made enough money to warrant anything past this movie. But I do believe that they would have made some. But then again. But then again, they were going to start the horror movie franchise, and they fucked it up on the opening with Mummy. So then again, yeah. Then again, I mean. You know, it, it is what it is, and there's still rumors about getting that started again. But nonetheless, you know, I, I do agree that this movie would have been negatively impacted at the box office had they, yeah. you know, even showed it. Even last year, it might have still taken a little bit of a hit. Yeah, I don't think it would have done it near as well. I think they got the timing absolutely right. Because, I agree. I agree. Uh, and I'm glad for it because it's a great movie, and it deserved to have a lot of people at the theater to see it. Totally really agree, good. Charles. And it's then there's the also that. There's also that feeling of like you were saying, it's like that it's 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 the, the volleyball or football scene on the beach afterward, you know. Well yeah. you just don't get that you don't get that when you go last. you watch it on a streaming service or something because of the COVID. Yeah, you know, that's not and it's not the same, you know. Same, I no. was I was watching um a couple other uh reviewers that I like to watch and they had both mentioned and we'll get into this more when we talk about Maverick specifically, but just because those those cockpit scenes were so well filmed because they were really flying the jets the vast majority of the time, you do lose some of that feeling if you're watching it on a small screen. Even if you got a 75 inch TV at home, it's still not the same. And yeah. when that cockpit takes up that entire theater screen, it's just a different level of immersion than you get watching at home and that level of immersion gets you emotional it gets you pumped up it gets you ready and it's just a it's just a better experience and so you know if they had released this even to streaming only yeah it would have been a fantastic movie but it just wouldn't have had the impact this like you said this was the perfect time to drop this movie they they nailed the timing on this absolutely nailed it summer's just starting like it was perfect perfect release and, time and i was actually when when they kept delaying it delaying delaying it i was really skeptical about this movie to be honest mm -hmm. guys i was really so skeptical about this movie and then they kept delaying delaying it, it was almost like a running joke was like the the, the trailer it's a <laughs> classic trailer before the movie ever comes out you know yeah. and uh um but no i mean they 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 it the timing was turned out to to be perfect for it and i don't know i don't know how they could make that movie better as a sequel to top gun because yeah i don't think they can they nailed it <laughs> like all the notes like perfectly and yeah. and it and it add and it had its own thing you know it, it made mm -hmm. sense it kind of like i i guess the thing i didn't think is how are you going to make it believable after all this time has passed is, is right. this even going to make sense you know what i mean because a lot of sequels yeah. are way later there's like does this even make any sense you know you're trying to catch up so much ground but it actually did fit and it fit the characters and it fit the, the, it, 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 it was a hundred percent believable in terms of yeah. this is the sequel to Top Gun, not, Hey, yeah. we wanted a cash grab. Right. Yeah. And, and Charles, yeah. to, to build off of that, cause I know we're going to talk about that here momentarily a little bit deeper, but part of that buildup and part of what you're talking about of the quality of the film is having a director like Joseph Kaczynski attached to it. And dude, the moment they announced he was the director, I was like, this is going to be good. This is going to be good because he and Tom Cruise already worked together on Oblivion. I love Tron Legacy. Joseph Cousins he is a great director, and I knew that this thing was going to be successful. It was just about navigating the pandemic and what that looked like. So the buildup for me was another Joseph Cousins film. He and Tom Cruise paired up. Top Gun sequel, like summer blockbuster, huge supporting cast. It was just like, oh my god, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> and then it's just like delay, delay, delay. delay. I'm like, no. So, but this well, is, I thought that was a build up it. for me. I thought that would hurt it, but it, it didn't. I mean, I thought and people would just have been fatigued and they just wouldn't necessarily come yeah. out because the the hype had been there initially and then you keep that going for three years. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, no, it, it it apparently apparently um. Um, and I probably wouldn't have saw it in theaters had I not 
saw the reviews being so good because I thought it was going to be. I just couldn't see it actually being a a a good sequel after all these years, you know. But it, I would go as far. It's a great movie. That, I would even go as far to say it's not only just a great sequel. It, it's it's a great movie in itself. Like, and I think yeah. that's when, that's how you make a good sequel, in my opinion. Is that it doesn't even feel like a like a continue. It doesn't feel like too much of it a continuation where they're re, they're rehashing things. But a completely yeah. different story, its own story with the characters you remember. Mm-hmm. And I think when yeah. you, you score that, because another movie that kind of did this was Doctor Sleep, a sequel to The Shining. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean, and they and they had a harder route because. They had to honor a book and a movie that were too different. Yeah, and yeah. and they and they honored it because they took the time and really were thoughtful, and they yeah. made a movie that stands on itself. And I think mm-hmm. Maverick absolutely stands on itself because I'm like watching it when I was looking. I'm like, it's like obviously you don't want to see this movie without Top Gun, right? But right. if you did see this movie without Top Gun. It, it's not too far fetched to still understand it and understand get it. some of the emotional level because Miles Teller plays Rooster so well oh, that it brings it brings back all the and Tom Cruise he's reacting to it so well you could see the pain so you yeah. see it from Penny Benjamin's uh, eyes in that case rather than the fans' uh, eyes which you know like I said. That comes down to good acting, good script, good directing, which was heavily here, which was heavily here. Now, now let's uh, go into our next topic real quick. Actually, can I can I talk about that for a second? Yeah, 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 yeah I, I totally agree with Charles. I'm 100 percent with you on that, man. I truth be told, I had zero interest in seeing this film at all what? until until about a week before it premiered. And I'm even like I'm I'm an avid uh, Transformers collector. As you can see here, this is yeah. oh, this is man. not one. This is not Ecto One. This is in fact a Transformer. Nice. And Hasbro, they did a promotion for this movie. They made a a Maverick Transformer. It's an F fourteen Tomcat. What? And I had no interest in buying it. It was ugly as fuck. I'm like, fuck that. I don't even want to see this movie. I don't care. So a week before this airs, um, or, or before, before it premieres, I start seeing some some buzz about it online. First thing I see is that. This film is so pro America, they're not going to air it in China. And I was like, <laughs> oh, now you have my interest. <laughs> now I kind of have to see where you're going with this. Yeah. And then, not only that, but when the first reviews start coming out, the critics are going apeshit. They're like, oh man, it's, it's awesome. You got to go see it. And I'm like, yeah. hold on, wait a minute. Really? Are these the yeah. same critics who are like, oh my God, there was nowhere near enough woke socialism in this for me? I hate it. You guys are telling me that I have to go see this movie? Okay. So uh, yeah. that's that's what got me on board. And uh, I'm glad it did because the movie kicked ass. Absolutely. The movie, the movie just tried to have fun. That's what it did. It just wanted us to have fun and remember having fun at the movies. Remember being a kid. Like I think the last time I truly had that much fun at the theaters were two uh, times. Like I mean, I mean fun. I mean everybody's cheering like it's a sports event. Uh, Spider Man No Way Home and Game I love. Infinity War. Like everybody, like when those certain cameos or those certain moments happen, everybody loses their fucking yeah. shit. It almost becomes a mosh pit, and uh, it's it's just perfect. Uh, but like I said, let's uh, keep moving on with our topics just because uh, I want to make sure we hit everything. So let's talk about another love interest. As, as as it was phrased in the uh, show rundown. Yeah. But what's very interesting is this character was mentioned in Top Gun, if everybody remembers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is like for a Hi. split second, she is mentioned. It, it just so you, everybody knows, it's at the very beginning when uh, Stinger is uh, pissed off at Goose and Maverick for doing the flyby. And they mention, like, oh, you pissed off every admiral. And the one he looks at Goose looks at him and he's like Admiral Benjamin for daughter his daughter, and I'm like yeah, Penny Benjamin. 
Yeah. Oh, yep. and, I have to go back and watch that. Yeah, because uh, he's like there, Raven. There, and, and, there was one guy in, in in the theater when I saw it. When I went and saw it, it was a packed theater. It was it was packed house. Yeah, it was it was packed. One, we one guy. They they call her Penny through the whole movie. They never really say her last name. I don't think. Maybe they do, but I don't remember it. And then then when the movie ends and the credits start rolling and it shows the cast and it says Penny Benjamin, this dude in the front row yells, "Penny Benjamin!" I fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was and great, man. Front row too, man. I love that energy. I love right. that energy. But that's the movie you come with. That's right. the movie you guys come with. So, uh, so we got another love interest thrown in. I like how this one didn't feel forced. It felt <sighs> fluid. It didn't feel too forced. Like I've seen Hollywood movies where they're like at the end that the, the ring comes out. All right. If Maverick would have been like. You could be my wingman. I'll be like, I'm fucking out. Of Maverick here. isn't allowed to like get married, man. Like he he can just fucking move on, but he can't he can't get married and like have kids and stuff. Like he, that's this what I mean. Is, I'm yeah. saying I'm glad they didn't force that on his character. Yeah, yeah. You know they would have. I've seen Hollywood go. All right, let's make this character betray everything it stands for. No, no. Maverick yeah. has to keep it nice and breezy, man. Well, I'm I'm not a big guy with the love interest themes anyway but given it the way they did it in that movie like you said it wasn't forced it was believable and it was not like i mean it wasn't i don't the way they did it it was it was it was good the way they did it was was fair i mean that's not my favorite part of the movie but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but no. um no, he goes to maverick and goes the romance in that movie was fantastic. So <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's not what I was like. <laughs> but, like um, only... but it works, and it, it does add to the storyline a little bit. Where you know he's got to go back out there. There's that tension, and where like he says he's not going to leave again, and well, he's who he is. Right, he's Maverick. So yeah, and he's going to have to be Maverick. Now, I do agree that the Jennifer Connelly uh, romance was definitely better than Kelly McGillis. And, you know, they even admit if you watch a lot of the like um, commentaries or behind the scenes type stuff when they're talking about developing the story, like they did throw the love interest in in the first movie at the very end. They even had to do reshoots, which is why Maverick's got longer hair and she's got a hat on in the elevator because they shot that after they were doing other projects to like bring more of the love story to light in the film so it was very much an afterthought in the first film and they even say they're like oh we realized we needed a love story so we had to put that in there <laughs> oh, um, we, we had to put it in there it's part of the recipe there. and we you know, know, really agreed that. put a little pepper a love story <laughs> now if you compare the chemistry that tom cruise and kelly mcgillis had to tom cruise and jennifer connelly dude it's night and day man like so i watched top gun the other day I wish I could have seen Maverick again before the show, but unfortunately, just didn't work out. Um, but you can tell clear as day which one is way more forced than the other. It's a lot more, <laughs> it's a lot more progressive with Jennifer Connelly than it is with uh, Kelly McGillis. And I'm not knocking her as an actress; she did just fine. It's just that it just it, 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 if they removed that whole element from the movie, absolutely nothing would change in the movie. So with Jennifer Connelly, though, there's some callbacks. Right, and that callback helped the cohesion to bring the two films together. But yeah, you could have eliminated her from this movie, and it would have still been exactly the I same. Wanna, uh, I want to just disagree. They, they didn't have quickly. an influence on anything that actually happened in the movie. So. Yes, it did. Yes, oh, it here did. we go. Okay, uh -oh. what do you got, Jesse? You tell me. You, are you telling me that Berlin scene didn't give you goals? <laughs> I mean, are you gonna sit here and be like, I hope that? I, listen, when I seen that scene, I was like, I hope that happens one day for me. Look, I'm you not gotta have you gotta have goals, man. I, I, I get goals. that. And look, we're we're not talking about six year old John Spankbank. We're talking about what added to the quality of the film. Okay? I'm talking about twenty nine year old Jesse Spankbank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about like you tell me. You tell me Berlin would have been like, you know what? I wouldn't want the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, but not. Yeah, but still. You know, I mean, it, it, the, the, the love interest is what it is. Um, but like I said, you know, ultimately, I felt like it was better in this film than the first one. But I'm yeah. not knocking performances or anything because I still love both films. But I'm just honest. If you eliminated that from both films, nothing would have changed. It would have been exactly the same. But how many movies, and I can't name any 
particular right off the top of my head, but where you've seen a sequel or something and they just throw in a love interest like that, just like forced, just yeah. to give some kind of storyline in the sequel. Right. You know, and that's that's not what really happened here. So I, I agree. I agree. And, yeah. you know, so, I mean, again, I, I, I love the film. This is not this is not a big negative criticism. No, no, no. It's not. I think the only time where it wore a tad bit with me a little bit for it was uh, when uh, he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And she she's like, you're just going to find a way. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I could have done that in front of a mirror. <laughs> Maverick finds a way. But you know what? I did like how he got fucked over at the bar and ended up having to like buy multiple funny. rounds for the entire. Bar. No, that was great. I was one of the best part of that whole love. Got scene. stuck with Honestly. like a three thousand dollar bill. Like we'll take that whenever you get a chance. You know, that's <laughs> one. Of, that was one of the best parts of the whole love scene. It yeah. just showed that they, that they had that dynamic where he kind of screwed yeah. things up in the past and the odor and yes. the rest of the bar. Yes, yeah. I like that. And I also like that they weren't at like one of those what the hell did they call those places where all the all the military men would go and then the girls would go to hook up with them. What are they called? Like Suds Buckets or something. I forget what they were called. They have some type of name. There's some well, name. Yeah, there. I haven't I been to those, so I don't know. It, it's basically like a bar where it's just nothing but military dudes and women trying to get laid by the military dudes. And there's like a there's like a layman's term for that and for i can't think of it now but i was happy that we didn't get that again because i did think that was annoying in the first one so in this one it was more just like a, a regular bar bar that just happened to have military people because of who owned the bar i thought that was a little bit better than than the one in the original you know again my opinion of course i loved i love the scene when he jumped out of the window to avoid the daughter she was right there staring at him oh, okay. <laughs> she's like yeah. just don't break her heart again jesse oh. said I knew that, that was going to happen, though. I knew that yeah. was going to happen when he went out that window. I knew that I knew that that girl was going to be waiting down there on the, when he went. But I saw it anyway. I still liked it. I liked yeah. it. I knew it was going to happen, but it was still really well. It was. Well done. It was just the reaction, their facial expressions. But yeah. you know what? It 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 made them feel like kids again, it and it made us all feel like kids again. You know what yeah, I mean, we've I think all been in that situation, you know, where we've we've tried to sneak out of somewhere and got caught. You know, so <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, and yeah, so that's yeah. another thing, Charles. You talked about the humor, which we can get into it a little bit. But there's a lot more humor in this film than in the first one. But it worked because it was naturally feeling humor. It was actual funny responses that were timed well. It didn't seem like it was forced, and I also enjoyed that. Jesse with his like, like everybody knows, I am like a huge loud talker. Jesse though laughs so loud, and like at first I thought people in the theater were gonna be like, "God damn, shut the fuck up!" He was like <laughs> loud laughing at every joke. But then as the movie went on, the rest of the theater started laughing at everybody's jokes. So then it became the whole theater laughing together. But in the yeah. beginning, man, Jesse was hitting it from the very very beginning. It was like me, him, the guy next to us, this guy over here, and this guy over here. But by the middle of the movie, everyone was laughing at every single joke, regardless. Like, yeah, just, and there were some fun. There were some funny moments in there. There were some funny. Oh, moments. there were plenty. There were just like I love the one scene where they're like, "Name Hangman, Coyote, Bob." Which call? <laughs> Bob. Bob. Yeah, that was great. That was great too. That's your call, that son. Was great. Yeah, that was great. Oh my, wow. That's hilarious. But yeah, it just this this movie, like I said, it 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 it, it had the spirit of an eighties movie so yeah. much. Oh, absolutely. And, it, and it, yeah, it was just great. It was great, and I think the way they started the movie out was perfect. Yeah, it started out pretty much identical yep. to Top Gun in almost every single way. Music, scenery, everything, yep. and I think that was great because it made us familiar. Yes, but it also we also knew it was going to be different. It's kind of like a little bit what Star Wars does. Yeah, it, it was it was it was very um yeah. very Force Awakens, but with Maverick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, well, not even so much that, but I mean, like Star Wars always starts the same way every single time. Yeah, so long ago in a galaxy far, far away, but but but, and then you have the thing. Every one of us, <laughs> the and thing. then you have the thing, the thing, and that you gotta uh, have the thing. If you don't have the thing, I mean, fuck you. Really. Yeah, yeah, but that's the whole. <laughs> that makes you get excited when Top Gun. Listen, when you, when Danger Zone started playing, oh, dude, I was like, people I was were tapping their feet. Yeah, man, that, that was really the that was the that was the the hook line and sinker. Like, yeah. oh, Danger Zone, it, it's, it's it, on, it, man, it's on. 
they even <laughs> edited it the same way to where it was playing the anthem. They're showing the carrier, the shots of the deck hands and everything. And then as soon as the first jet finally goes on the catapult, it blends right into danger zone with some action shots. And it was just the, and I was watching something where they said, again, they did that purposely to remind you, this is Top Gun. Here's what you love about Top Gun. And then after five minutes, it was now here's the news story. And that was perfect. It was the right balance to bring you back in and then take you into the new story. Here's where we are 35 years later. Yeah. yeah su- supreme, superb editing. Yeah. Uh, music, again, um, I think we got to give credit where credit's due there. Lady Gaga did a great job with the soundtrack. Um, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to feel about that. Seeing her name in the credits, the soundtrack, but then I started hearing the music and I was like, okay, this works. Well, that's what you get. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. She is an eighties singer who was born, who, who, whose career wasn't in the eighties. Cause there's a lot of past songs that she has. They sound like they were taken, they were made in the eighties. So when I saw her name on it, I got excited because that, and also she has the pipes. Yeah, she like she's one of those few singers that can actually sing. Now, Agreed. granted, her career started with, you know, a lot of the same bubblegum pop stuff, but that's a lot of artists. You know, they have to do what the studios want so they can make their money. But she broke out. She does her own thing. She does it the way she wants to do it now. And and I think that's what that's why these the songs that she's doing now are so damn good because now it's her raw talent with it. Yeah. So. Oh, Justin, yeah. let's go ahead and uh, transition into our next topic. I, unless anybody else has something to say about Oh, by the way, like, Jennifer Connelly looked great in this movie. And I don't yeah. think that as, like, an insult or anything. Um, I, I feel like she had some up and downs. Like, I, I thought she was, like, looking kind of sickly at one point. But then she kind of bounced back, you know. And uh, I just, I, I think for, like, for everybody's age, everybody's age, including Val Kilmer in this movie, yeah. they all looked great for their age. I was like, wow, everybody just looks great in this movie. <laughs> but, dude, I, yeah, before we, we, we uh, so we will go into this topic, but so I'll bring what I, what I, what I wanted. So we pretty much talked about everything I've wanted. But the one thing I did want was somehow to honor Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you know what? Like, it, for those of you who haven't paid attention to his career, he and his health, it's been declining heavily. And I was just thinking, like, oh, my God. And what they did for his character, the hoops that they jumped through. Oh, yeah. To make him able to be in this movie. And the fact that he spoke. Uh, well, they did get AI for that. He he, he didn't yeah. actually speak. That oh, was AI. Did yeah, oh, he, okay. he could, he can't talk at all. Period. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, no, it, I, I thought it was too uh, Jesse because it was that believable. But it was believable. It and, yeah, they they AI. He cannot speak at but all. But it anymore. was, yeah, it was well done. Though. It was, it was, yeah, man, it was a bummer. Like that. That's actually the only the only spoiler I got for this movie was. Uh, Val Kilmer's appearance got spoiled for me because, like, when they released the trailers, they did an awesome job of not giving anything cool yep, away in this movie. They sure did. You, you, you see a picture of Val Kilmer on the wall, and that's what you get. Like, right. maybe he's in it, maybe he's not. I don't know. Then some asshole puts an article on Facebook that says, "Oh, Val Kilmer was in the movie! Yay!" And I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck!" <laughs> but uh, they did. That's the only spoiler man. I got, man. But I, I'm so happy he was in it. Yeah, I'll say they did a really good job. Keeping that third act a secret, I gotta say. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, dude, yeah, absolutely, yeah, dude. I have stuff to talk about that too. Yeah, but we'll yeah. Bring, <laughs> same. We'll bring, we'll bring that up soon. We'll, we'll we'll definitely bring that up soon. But uh, what were some things that you wanted from this film, and did you get it or did you not get it? Uh, going into this, zero expectations. Like I said, I didn't even want to see it until like about a week prior, <laughs> and then it completely blew me away. Like, so any expectation I had or didn't have was completely met and exceeded <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, super happy with what we got. We got nostalgia. We got music. We got story. We got new characters. We got old characters. Everything was done right. Everything was done well. Uh, they did not fuck around with this movie. They they set out to like make a masterpiece, and that's what we got. I agreed. Agreed. I agree. Charles, what about you? Well, I didn't really have any any expectations for the movie besides hoping it didn't suck. 
<laughs> because I, I literally had low. I had so you have no idea how low my expectations for top. Oh, I, I you mean, told top me top several two. times. I know they were low. <laughs> the idea that they would make a Top Gun two just didn't even make any sense to me. <laughs> so, no, this, this is like, this and is... I liked, I like, I like the the original, right? So it's not that I, I it's, 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 it, yeah, it's a great movie, but there's no way you're gonna follow this up with anything that's gonna be on that par. Yeah. So why even bother trying to do that? That was right. kind of my take early on. But going into the movie, um, I, it was also good because when I came, came into the movie and the movie ends up being like awesome, you're just kind of like, well, there's no expectations, but it blew me away. So this is how little faith Charles had in this film. <laughs> I had no I, faith in it. <laughs> I, I would go like a week without talking to Charles and he would just randomly send me a message like, dude, Top Gun's going to be bad. Or he'd be like, I'm really worried about Top Gun. <laughs> And I like, thought, why are you saying this to me? You know I'm so bummed for this. And I thought like this shitting was, on it left and right before it's dude, come out. I heard them talk. I saw a couple articles where they talk about, oh, it's going to be focused on drones and stuff. And I'm like, oh, great. Some AI drone Terminator <laughs> 2 kind of crap going on. And I was like, no, this is going to be so bad. <laughs> and then it didn't end up being... I mean, they mentioned that the, the whole idea that that someday they're going to be obsolete kind of thing, and it, it, but it went in a different direction yes. than I thought it was going to go, and uh, um, and it was all really well done. But yeah, no, I had I thought this is I thought this was a Tom Cruise second Mummy movie. That's <laughs> I, I, thought that. like I think I, I, think, I, was, I think I was afraid of that too. I, I not I was a little bit afraid of that as well. It, 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 but what's very interesting about the success of this movie is it really proves that a movie doesn't have to be a comic book film to succeed nowadays. It yeah. just has to be a good movie yeah. that gives the audience a fun experience. Yep. Because like when you go to a movie theater, you want to be wowed. You want to be like, right. whoa, you know, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like something going crazy. And this movie did that. It did that. And so Jesse, would you say that the Nicole Kidman bumper at the beginning properly set your expectations for your theater experience? Okay, all right. So <laughs> I, gotta I gotta tell this quick story. <laughs> are you guys familiar with that stupid Nicole yes. Kidman bumper? I saw the same one. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Like, why did they get Nicole Kidman out of all the okay. actor actors? Why why wouldn't I, they? I don't know. I didn't I didn't <laughs> So, so here's what it is. So basically, for those who do not know, every AMC thing starts with, when we go to the movies, <laughs> as we're walking into the theater. Oh, I didn't go at now, AMC, so that's why I didn't get that. Wow, well, Charles didn't get to see it, man. Yeah. Okay. But, but anyways, so here, so here's why I was losing my mind watching that scene. <laughs> on, you, on YouTube and TikTok, there's a meme where some guy has taken that bumper ad and replace the movie that she's watching with like the most risque hardcore sex scenes. <laughs> uh, the scene where uh, Jeff Daniels is taking a shit in the bathroom and Dumb and Dumber. That's uh, amazing. Tom Green so wrestling funny. the dead deer and Freddie got fingered. Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. And she's like, she's like, we love these movies. We want this to be why there. We come to the movies. And then, like, there's some girl getting <laughs> We're transported to another universe. <laughs> right, right, right. She's oh, my like, God. Dude, Get in my mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just watching it. You're like, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. That was good. Yeah. Um, so I was, I fucking cackle. Hey, <laughs> come on. It comes on. So, but. before we move on, real quick, um, I'm glad that we got the conflict between Rooster and Maverick. I wanted that. Yeah, that was very well done. I feel well, like yeah. you if they didn't do that, it wasn't going to work. You have to do something like that to be able to connect the two films, develop the relationship, the natural evolution of the characters. But the one thing that I didn't get, and I understand I didn't get it because of Val Kilmer and his, his health condition and whatnot, but what I wanted is I wanted – Iceman and Maverick to be the new Viper and Jester. And I wanted oh, like Rooster yeah. as one of the pilots. And then I wanted another pilot to then have them have the conflict and Maverick and Iceman have to help them navigate it. Just like Jester and Viper help them navigate it because then there's a connection and we got like three quarters of that. And I was totally fine with that. So <laughs> happy that they did that. Yeah. I think I think it was kind of nice that they did it the way they did it, though, because 
it, I mean, it's it was very unpredictable. A lot of it was unpredictable how they handled it. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you didn't like, know. I like how they added in the the twist that he's not too mad at the fact it was Goose's father. He was mad at the fact he pulled his papers from the Navy, which mm -hmm. compounds on the death of his father, which compounds on the fact that Tom Cruise or Maverick doesn't want it, it doesn't reveal that the mother made him promise to keep him out of the Navy and all that stuff. Yeah. So there's, it was very complex and painful and it was human. And I think that's yeah. what made it so rich. Agreed. It wasn't just, Oh, I hate you. You killed my father. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was more than that. There was, actual things that were involved with that. So I definitely agree, Jesse. And I was glad that that's what we got. I really was. I think one of my favorite things about how they shot the movie was there's a scene right before they're about to go up in the plane, in the uh, jets and uh, goose and not goose, but it might as well just been goose rooster and Maverick start talking and all the other guys are looking and watching them talk. Like, what are they talking about? Yeah. And, and they obscure the lens so much that it might as well have been Goose he was talking to. Because the Miles Teller looked exactly like oh, Goose. Looked like, exactly have... like him, dude. Exactly. Oh my God. You could have told me that was archive footage. Yeah. I believed you. I had no choice but to believe you. Because I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But, yeah, no. So, they did a lot of this. I love the camera work they did that yeah. made sure we knew that this is the sun. The great balls of fire scene. They're playing the, mm -hmm. the piano. The angle. They they kept the angle to the right. Yep. Or the left of him. The left of him. Just like how they did it in the original movie. Very, very great camera work on the end. Uh, let's go ahead and transition into our next topic, Jesse, because we're coming out in the last 15, 20 minutes here. So, mm -hmm. favorite characters. Favorite characters. So, let's try to avoid I like Maverick. I like Goose. <laughs> I like Iceman. Yeah, we get it. We all like them. You want to know who I thought held it down in this movie? Fucking Ed Harris and John Hamm. That's who fucking held it down in this movie. My God. Two stellar performances for two completely different actors. I love Ed Harris. I love John Hamm. And they both played asshole naval men. <laughs> better than I think real asshole naval men are. The only one that can top them is the man himself, James Tolkien, which I was upset did not get a cameo. I really wanted to see him smoking a cigar, talking about a rubber rubber dog shit flying out of our <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it. I'm okay that we didn't get it because Ed Harris and John Hamm just fucking held those supporting roles down, man, to really let Maverick know you aren't shit. You haven't amounted to shit, and you're going to keep doing what we tell you to do because you refuse to move forward. I thought that was just great how he gets pushed around by these guys, but yet he's the best pilot in the fleet. And that to me, that was really that really worked for me in the story and the conflict with him in the military still. Even though he was doing test pilot projects, he's still a part of the military, and they're still bossing his ass around when he could fucking fly circles around those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I definitely think those two. I mean, like, like you said, having a supporting cast and having them work off the main character very well is crucial to a film. It makes the world that you're brought into even more believable. Yeah, um, I, I definitely felt that. How about you two, gentlemen? Uh, was there a character that you felt uh, held it down? It was. It was between Maverick and Bob. Bob, <laughs> dude, there it is. <laughs> um obviously the little girl was amazing oh yeah she, sure. was, she was awesome um i would have liked to seen a rick rosovich cameo in this i think he was cool as slider yeah uh, if i'm being completely honest when you want to talk about 80s films i don't i still can't figure out or understand why, how or why rick rosovich never really busted out of the supporting character role and made it into like a leading leading actor maybe he was a lead in something and i just never saw it i don't know but all the movies i remember him in i remember him having a small part in the original terminator uh of course he's slider in top gun he was in uh roxanne with steve martin he has he's great in that movie but he never really busted out and like was was, was like a main guy um i really dug with rick rossovich i'd like to see him in this I think some actors just that they get their niche you know and mm -hmm. kind of like they just tend to do better supporting versus leading 
or they just oversat. Like, look at fucking Clint Howard. Dude's been working steady for like 45 years and still cranks out four or five movies a year. Some are good, some are bad, but he's still going. Everybody has their niche. And I think for him, sure. that supporting role was just his niche. And, you know, sometimes that happens. He likes to play the odds. He likes to play the odds. <laughs> uh, Tim Robbins' uh, cameo would have been nice, but, uh, okay. you know, I understand why yeah, he's huge and he is kind of old now. So I get that. But that just would have been nice. You know, just some of the older pilots, uh, it would have been kind of cool to see, you know, but, eh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not to, too broken up about it. You didn't want to, like, um, make it too. Kind yeah. of pulled too much in either. You know, they did a good job of, yeah. you know, not hitting the 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 stuff that he needed to do, but not get so crazy where they're just pulling in so much stuff <laughs> just to think of convoluting uh, it with nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right, Charles. You're absolutely right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think because they did that, you know, a lot of reviewers are deeming this to be superior to the uh, to the original one. True. So, a lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> and, and, uh, Again, I'm just I'm just quoting critics. I'm I know. Just, I I'm think it belongs just... right next to it on the shelf, though. I mean, yeah, 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 if, yeah. if you're going to get it in a DVD oh, and set it, you you could set it right next to it, and it it belongs there. Yeah. It's on par with. I mean, it's it's a great movie. Agreed. So Agreed. Agreed. I wouldn't say that it was. Yeah, don't want to say it's better Jay. than the first. No, I mean they can't. Oof. Jesse, yeah. so for you, but, what were what was a character or characters uh, that you really enjoyed aside from the obvious? Bob, um, you know what? <laughs> One that was very interesting for me, at least, that I thought was pretty cool was fan- was a uh, Hangman. I hey, liked, yeah. Yeah. I liked yeah. his helmet so much. I oh, his helmet was dope, it man. Spelled out Hangman. It was Mr. Yeah. DA's. Yep. I yep. just like the game Hangman, and I just thought like. I was like, that's a cool helmet. That's the one thing. Like when I watch those movies, I really try to pay attention to their helmets. That's their because... personality. That's their alter ego type thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. And uh, so it's like, I just watch them. Like, damn, these are cool helmets. These are really cool helmets. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, I really liked him too, and I like that um, he was a mix of both Maverick and Iceman from the original film. Very and I, much. And I like that all of the pilots weren't that way because in the first Top Gun, they were pretty much all that way. This one, it was just like him. He was kind of the standout and everybody else was just kind of like, fuck you, Chode. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I, I liked that because to me that felt natural. That was a natural evolution forward of what those pilots would be like relative to, to Al's point, macho 80s stuff. Well, we've mm-hmm. kind of moved on from that. And so this was natural. It, di- it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel silly. I was just like, oh, okay, it's great. It, it totally makes sense. I'm in. Let's keep going. Like, it, it just it felt very natural. And I really enjoyed that. And the other thing that I liked was that this was a flip. In the first film, it's all about the pilots, the instructors, the military guys. You don't know what's going on with them. You see them in a couple of scenes, fine. This is reversed. Now it's you really don't know what's going on with these pilots or in a couple of scenes. You kind of know what's going on because you saw the first film, but it's about the old guys, the military guys, the, you know, the instructors, the admirals and all that shit going on. So you get to see. And I think that's why it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's why it worked because it gave you that different perspective and a different story, which is a similar story, but a different story from a totally different angle that brought new Yes. insights new new kind of like oh that's how they're you know exactly. yeah i think that's why it works so well i agree but, i loved that so let's so that segues us into our next uh segment perfectly uh there it is there it is <laughs> wow that i did not expect that i did not because yeah. like i like okay so let's set this up just just so we could get our conversation well, real out. quick let me just say one thing okay. um was it just me, or did this feel like the briefing room for the uh, Star Wars A New Hope attacking the Death Star? Because it really felt like they were just prepping these guys to go on a bombing run for that thermal. Holy exhaust. shit, it was. And it was kind of... <laughs> oh, we wait, got the two wait, towers wait, here. Wait, we got wait, the wait, two wait, meter wait, now target that you down it? here. Like, you gotta go in this valley to get wow, to... Wow, now, <laughs> now, that, now that you and, mentioned it, wow. And... <laughs> I his didn't think thing, about that, his, but this targeting thing didn't work. Yeah. He didn't 
Use, use the, the force, force, Rooster. Right, use it, Rooster. If you hear Goose, do it, son. <laughs> <laughs> they're talking. They're they're talking to Force ghosts. Right. <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me, Goose. Holy well, I know. shit! Wow. Yeah. No, I did. I I totally see that now that you mentioned that, but that yeah. didn't pop in my head at the time. But now I almost wow now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> mind blown. Boom. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> my mind just caved in just now. My mind yeah. just caved in. That was that was very very insightful, John. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. I wasn't ready. It, it changed the way I'm thinking that. about that scene now. I'm thinking yeah. about that scene differently now. Don't think about it. When when they're when they first brief the pilots, like the first time, Maverick's up there, they've got the display up, he's pointing to shit, there's animations, and I'm just like, man, this is like the trench run briefing right here. Like, so yeah. Then that, that rooster comes back like Han Solo out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah! I'm back, baby. Oh, man. So my thing, I'm going to let you guys talk about the third act, but I'm just going to say that my thing was is that I love the F-14. It's always been one of my favorite jets. I'm disappointed they did F-18s in this instead of F-35s or technically F-22s, and it was stupid why we had to then pay all this money to get F-35s. But anybody who knows all about that drama knows what I'm talking about. But I, I, I feel like it should have been an F-22 or an F-35 instead of an F-18. But I'm okay because the canopy of the F-18 provided those beautiful shots. I'm okay with that. Um but I'm so glad we got the F-14. I, you have no fucking idea how happy I was when they hopped in that thing. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. Like, because it's just a thing, you know? Like, it's, it's a badass jet to begin with. It was a jet featured in the first film. So they found a way to bring it back without it feeling forced. And I loved that. that and yes, Rooster comes back. Yes, they bury the hatchet. But to me, seeing that F-14 in the third act, that, that was it for me, man. I I, I loved that moment. Now I you did have to have a little bit of a sus suspension of disbelief there. With sure. okay, how like if, if we're going right. to step back and say how likely is it that they would be able to walk into the base right. after it's been right. bombed or whatever there whatever and and find that one plane that was yeah. not hit and it happens to be there and didn't get into it and 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 get it in the air on a blown up runway. Yeah. Okay. Well, there. But I'm willing to give them that. Sure. I'm willing to give them that. You gotta give them that. And it would happen to be an F-14 by coincidence. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, like it all just happened to be. Yeah, okay. Well, but you know, okay, we'll give right, you that. Right. They they yeah. they were able to cover it with some good humor because I like where they're like, all right, keep walking, keep walking. Anybody looking? No one's looking. No one's looking. Out. <laughs> no, I did like I did run. like that because they that that showed that the writers knew how slightly unrealistic that yeah. scene was. And they had and they were poking fun at, at, at that a little bit, even yeah. While they were, doing I always, it. I always thought Maverick to be a bit Bugs Bunny, and I say that in a good way. You know, I mean, like, like that cockiness that, like, he could, like, he, no matter what things seem to, he gets to fall upwards. Like he, he almost gets grounded forever. But no, I saves him. He goes the Top Gun, and then he's never gonna fly again. But now he's gonna fly the big mission. But now right, he's right, 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 and he's He'll gonna die in some yeah, country. Right. But now he's got his favorite jet and his favorite thing. Now he's <laughs> gonna start flying. Like it just like I love how. So it stuck with the theme that he could easily sneak into a base because I'm like, <laughs> he's done it all. He's done it all. He's pissed everybody off. Why not? But he could do this, and I think you bring up a good point, Jesse, because nobody. At least I don't think anybody had any idea there was going to be ground shit in this. Like, no. I certainly didn't think that was going to happen. And so then all of a sudden we're on the boots on the ground. You're like, holy shit, this movie just changed again. Like, oh, my God, look at this. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I think that was fun for Tom Cruise and Miles Teller as well, because they got to act a little different way. They got to have some humor in doing it. It's a different environment. They're out of the ship trying to get into a new ship like that. So to me. Again, this was a good decision. It was probably a small decision that was made in the meeting room one day that ended up having a huge payoff because the connection to what happened there and the enhancement of the relationship. Well, what if they had just ended it right after the huge. bombing? They had just yeah, it would have just right felt there. like the first one where it's like, okay, it's over, everybody's happy. Yeah. Hey, I saved you, you saved me, we're good. This forced 
Maverick and Rooster to really come together and fucking bury the hatchet and get out of there alive. And I did really like that. And, and yeah, the importance and of having It wasn't those in two. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> but the importance of having those two fly <laughs> off together, I yeah. think was so important. Because like I said, Maverick has been a lone wolf his entire life. Everything he pilots is by himself. And if you watch that, if you watch that movie, think about it. Rides a motorcycle by himself. Flies that plane at the beginning by himself lives by himself everything he is very even when he's sitting on the beach the chick is at the porch the people are playing he is by himself mm. so to see him finally ride with somebody yeah made it more impactful and that it was, was goose's son that it was goose it was yep. i mean goose's son i agree and I, yeah. I like I like how that just really tied it together. It's like a good comedy routine. You brought it back at the end, and you completed the story. And even though we all kind of knew that was going to happen, yeah, it was still a huge payoff because you're just like, just like when he and Iceman at the end when they bury it, you're like, fuck yeah! And <laughs> same thing again, they bury it, you're like, yes, you know, like you know it's coming, but you're still so excited when it happens. Yeah, and and the yeah. thing is, like, I don't mind knowing that certain things will happen because sure. I mean, long time ago, comedy—the term comedy meant didn't mean funny. It it meant that the play was going to have a happy ending. So I knew this was going to arrive at some happy satisfaction. Right. Maverick's not going to fucking die in the end. No, <laughs> yeah, no, well, no. I don't know. Die. You know, you who? No, that one yeah, we didn't know. They killed, so James Bond. They, Bond. they killed James Bond. I mean, I, you know, I. Who knows what they'll do? For well, sure. but, but James Maybe. Bond isn't a person. He's he's a thing. So that's a little bit different with James Bond than than Maverick. Who knows what they would do? Maybe Tom would just say, you know what? I think this is the time to send him off. You know, you know, <laughs> Let's do it. He he might have had that idea, you know. So you the know, the bomb is dropping, and you just hear Berlin start to play. He sacrifices himself <laughs> to everyone. No, 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 no. Tom his Cruise Jesus is OT thirteen, so he wouldn't die. L. Ron Hubbard would come down and save him, and they would. L. Ron, oh my god, he knows, man. Oh my god, L. Ron, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, it's L. Ron. All right, man. Um. Can I talk for a minute? Al, yeah, yeah. show is yours. Do it. Okay, so first and foremost, I have to steal a signature John um, catchphrase right now. Oh, shit. Because it's necessary and it's appropriate. Uh, this ending was everything. <laughs> I like how you did the mannerism, too. That everything. Everything. So we're all sitting there in the theater, right? And when I say we're all, I don't mean my party. I mean everyone in the fucking theater. We're all sitting there, right? Yep. And the ending happens. And they literally foreshadowed that ending like two hours earlier in the movie. It was like a Wayne's World moment, right? Like, <laughs> oh, by the way, there's F-14 Tomcats on the enemy runway. Like, hmm, I have to wonder if this information is going to pay off in the film later. Despite that, not one motherfucker in that entire theater saw it coming. Yeah. None of us no, no, no. saw <laughs> it coming. We're sitting there like, oh, no, Maverick crashed. Rooster crash, they're together. What are they going to do? I'll tell you what they're not going to do. They're not going <laughs> to sneak onto the enemy base, steal an F-14, and fly that motherfucker out of there. Oh, shit, look what they're doing. They're sneaking onto an enemy base. They're stealing an F-14, and they're flying that motherfucker out of there. Like, none of us saw it coming. It was brilliant. It was fucking brilliant. Was. That, that is why that movie was so good. Nobody saw it coming. Nope. I don't know how we didn't. They did enough distraction in wizard yeah. tricks and Jedi mind tricks or whatever the fuck to distract us from it. We didn't see it coming and it blew our minds. It was so fucking good. Totally. Um, agree, man. So, totally so, agree. I think at Jesse, you can keep me honest here, but every motherfucker in that theater, including the guy next to you that was holding your hand was on the edge of their seat. Yes. for That entire third act, man. Yes. We were all like, <laughs> I, I think at one point, uh, at the very end, where like they they're out of flares or they're about to get shot down, then Hangman comes out. You heard and like a giant, too. yeah, you heard a giant exhale from the whole audience. Like yeah. they're like, 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 okay, all right, he's he's all right, he's okay. <laughs> well, I like I like how they did Hangman like they did Maverick in the original. They had him on backup. And launched him when needed. And so then, boom, here comes Hangman. Drop it in like, bat, 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 
you know so it's just like it, it was just like the Mavericks swooping in in the original but now Mavericks that's a great point coming that's in. an amazing point it's kind of like what they I, I just realized that's what they did with that character the whole time yes. we, we were meant to see him like the other pilots saw Maverick in the first one we're like that guy's a dick well that's how everybody else saw Maverick in the first one he's a dick yep. now we know why exactly that's amazing that's uh, great, that's also right. they they mentioned that he le- that he leaves people's wingman. Remember when? Uh, yeah, when yeah. never leave your wingman. Right. Against, he was going against uh, Maverick, and Maverick goes, "Leaving your wingman? That's an old move." <laughs> <laughs> I love that too. They're in the whole the whole second act where they're training. He's like, "Gotcha, gotcha," and it's like this montage of just him flying up. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you're dead. It was like twenty five different times in the course of like three minutes. That was hilarious. I love that. Because it was just like he's just schooling. These are Top Gun graduates, and he's just destroying them. Like it was great, man. All right, I got one more thing about the ending, and then you guys can talk. Go for um, it. Now. I don't know if anybody else caught on ca- caught on to this. I might be the only one, but at the at the very end, when he lands the plane on the deck, I felt like that was kind of a hat tip nod to Hot Shots. You remember Hot Shots with Charlie? Yeah, King? man. Yeah. Remember man. how he's like lost the wing. There goes the other one, touching down. The plane just falls on the fucking deck of the carrier. I felt like they were kind I of homaging that. that. In the I end, know. the way he landed that fucking plane. Yeah. I, I felt like that was intentional, and that's why they did it that way. Oh, I didn't I can imagine. That, I can imagine that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny as hell. I'm going to have to go back and watch Hot Shots. <laughs> yeah, I, that was... I haven't seen that movie in forever. John Cryer's character with the live vision. <laughs> <laughs> Got like fish in his goggles, like swimming around. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Charles, so anything from you for third act? Anything that really was the impactful moment or the payoff moment for you? Well, so I, I honestly thought they might actually kill Maverick. Really? So, you thought that so- might happen? So I had more of that breath holding going on through those scenes because I honestly didn't know if they, I honestly thought maybe he would be the one that died and maybe Rooster would live. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. Um, I, I almost thought that it was going to be like a trade off of, you know, what happened last time, but different, you know, where he, but, but, you know, I thought I, so I, until, until, and the end where they had that moment, um, but I, yeah, I thought I thought it's possible that they're gonna kill kill him or he's gonna die. Damn. So that was like so. There's some suspense there. I mean, I yeah. thought it's a it's a Top Gun. Probably not. They can't they can't really. But part of me in my head thought, you know what? Maybe they will. Maybe they will be ball. They they they'll they'll, they'll be ballsy enough to do that. Which I'm not saying. I'm happy they didn't. <laughs> but I, am too. I I would be. It would. It's not what I would. I think it still probably would have been a great movie. Still, but like I would. I'm happy they didn't do that. Yeah. Um. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that whole last scene was very, it was super tense. And then we've talked about, about storyline, but what about like all the, just the, the camera work on all oh, that stuff, man. That's all what the you flight get with scenes, the, Joseph the, the, the flight scenes and, 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 and everything just keeping you right there in, in the mm-hmm. cockpit where you're just, you, you, and, and just wrapping you up where you're in that moment so much. That was just, that was stellar, man. Oh, it was, it was. A great movie. You know, I was this close to crying. I'm pretty sure Jesse teared up. I, I did. was this close. I was this close. If they killed Maverick, I would have cried like a baby. I'm <laughs> going to deny it. I would have. I, I would have been like, bawling. Like, like a toddler that skid his knee, I cried. <laughs> would, would you have been, have been like able to... Mountain crying, man. It just would, would not have been able to stop. It's like, would oh my you... God. <laughs> would you have been able to accept it as a good movie had they killed Maverick? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. yeah. Absolutely. I, I would have, him and saving Deuce's son... Yeah, that's anything. what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, I kind of thought that, that I was like, and goes. Yeah, I really thought that that might happen, and I still thought that. I mean, and that still would have been a good ending. It still would have. Yeah, it would have been. It would would have been a hard ending, but it would yeah. still would have been. That still would have been a great movie. Yeah, um, yeah, and I wonder. Right. <laughs> I almost wonder if that ever in the writers' room whether that, that ever even. Oh, I'm sure that was on the was board on the table it together. You know, I'm sure they there thought, was. A, hey, it was up there. What if we? It around. Yeah, I wonder. I, I, I think it, it probably was. I mean, it yeah. definitely because I mean, had to when, be. it, when it comes to emotionally punching an audience in the stomach, that's like <laughs> the top of the list. That yeah. would be top of the list. They're like, all right, how do we fucking scar them? All right, let's, <laughs> let's have this on the list. Let's well, have this also on the list. 
another thing is is that Tom Cruise really doesn't die in any of his films, so that would have been a big deal too if they would have killed him off. That, yeah. yeah. He did I thought he was gonna I watched the movie recently, I thought he was gonna die and he didn't. It was the uh don't judge me. I had I had to watch it one time in my life. Interview with the vampire. I had to watch it once. Thought he was fucking goner. Don't you fucking look at me like that. I'm very <laughs> No, 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 honey. I don't need you to back me up, honey. I love Can you. Sarah what? see my face right now? Yeah, I mean no, no, look, look. Dude, in all fairness, it's better than Twilight. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> How have you not seen Interview with a Vampire until this one time? What the hell is wrong with you? Because it never interested me. What are you talking about? I, I haven't. Oh I still haven't seen it. Skip, I'll say, it. skip Queen of the Dam. Just buy the soundtrack, <laughs> and you're good. All right, oh, right. I can do that. I can do that. Point <laughs> is. Point is, you're right. I mean, but the, but also, I think the reason why he doesn't die in his movies is because in real life he can't die because of L. Ron Hubbard. Okay. <laughs> what well, is he dead? Did you see? No, the body? no. L. R. H. isn't dead. L. R. H. isn't dead. He just alive. He's alive. Ascended to a new plane. He's alive. L. Ron was dead. Okay. Honey, did you see the body? Nothing from Leah Remini show. Hey, Danny, have you guys see the body? Yeah, he didn't. He 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 just ascended to a different level. Like he's exactly. he's still exactly, exactly. He's the only one that can hit OT fourteen. Tom Cruise came to hit OT fourteen. Yeah, only Scientology. LRH. All Scientology is is just us pretending it's not the real word. <laughs> Goddamn! It made me love Tom Cruise, right? Even though the motherfucker Bro. is crazy with Scientology, I'm just like, holy shit! I'm loving That's- this movie. Bring That's it. why he still won an Oscar for any movie. Any movie he's done. Because <laughs> he made me like him. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you crazy son of a bitch who held right. Katie home hostage for three years. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I don't want to like you. because She had to grab her kid and run from your crazy ass. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking out of your mind. And I love you. You oh, tanked shit. one of my favorite movie reboots. And I love you still. <laughs> Here's an Oscar. You convinced Here's me an to like Oscar. You. you convinced me to like you. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. But anyways, that's all the time we got, guys. Uh, thank hey, you guys so much, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you guys. I want to thank Al. I want to thank Charles. Make sure you guys uh, go and follow their Facebooks, Instagram, Twitters, TikToks, everything. Only fans if they got them. All right, follow it all. Um, and uh, uh, John. Good to have you back, my friend. Thanks. Oh, and side note, I'm going to be on Charles OnlyFans next week. Um, oh, you are? Are you wearing the sunglasses only? Yeah, well, it's 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 me and you Just in the, the sunglasses? Naked. naked. Why don't you start oh, your own sunglasses. site, Only Sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> have the Corey Hart song playing in the background of every movie? <laughs> well, th- make sure you put – well, post that information on our page. And make sure you, <laughs> and make sure you keep following – I think that uh, might get group. censored. I think that might get censored. We'll, we'll, we'll edit it. it may not be. We'll be good. We'll ever, yeah. Against community standards. <laughs> be sure to follow us here on Facebook and Instagram if you're watching. And make sure you follow uh, us or subscribe to us on YouTube. This episode will be on there tomorrow. So if you weren't able to watch this episode because of spoilers, you were in and out because – you haven't seen this movie. I feel like I feel like we have to watch this episode because we didn't get to see anybody's comments this time. Yeah, we yeah. Well, I think a lot of people haven't seen it yet, so they. they oh shit, that could be. Same, same with Batman. Remember, we we yeah, we, that's a we had to rerun event. Batman because nobody had gotten to see it yet. See, we're all like, we will thick and thin go to the movies but everybody has different like things that they're able to get done and stuff and whenever you review a brand new film you run the risk of you know a lot of people not having seen it yet these, that's movies, fair. these episodes always get the views on the back end they always yeah, that's where they're gonna get so this is yeah but anyways thank you guys so much for joining us thank you for everybody who's watching uh until next time uh i'm jesse i'm john and you've been sitting at the grown-ups table thank you and have an awesome night everybody take care